Hello guys and welcome to Free Words Crew and this is 75 day hard generative AI learning challenge and this is day 5 and in this video I will tell you about natural language processing and this is stage 1 of NLP. In this video I will tell you about what is NLP and uh, why NLP is used in generative AI and uh, what are the like different types of uh, NLP algorithms and along with those algorithms pros and cons and when to use and when not to use. Okay, so let's get started with this video. Okay, so first thing is what is an LP? So NLP is a, a like a part of a, a machine learning or artificial intelligence that helps with the interaction between computers and humans in the natural language. Because, because you know that uh, uh, our computer systems only understand the binary language. So how you can make our computers understand our natural language, English, Hindi, French or any kind of language as well. So the goal of the NLP is to enable those machines to understand, interpret and generate the human language as well. Okay, so it involves the development of some certain algorithms and models that allow the computers to comprehend and respond to human language in a way that is both meaningful and also contextually and grammatically correct. Okay, so if you see this right uh, screenshot here, it takes all of your textual data, extract the features and by extracting the features, it fit those features to the machine learning model and that will classify or predict what you want to do with the help of natural language processing algorithms. Okay, so now what is the like significance of those algorithms? So in the large language models, they can be used like for next word predictions, content generations. Okay, like we can like use NLP in that way and also in the sentiment analysis as well you need to know that a certain kind of a sentence has what kind of sentiment behind it it is a positive negative or neutral you could also you use it for the language translation building chatbots information extraction or many more concepts like uh, uh, topic modeling and uh, document segmentation as well there are like many more use cases available okay so now now our next uh, question is why NLP for generative AI Okay, so the natural language processing is a foundational element of generative AI and large language models. And here are the like several reasons why NLP is crucial in the context of generative AI and large language model. Okay, so what is mean by this language understanding? Okay, so the language understanding means the NLP provides the foundational tools and techniques for machines to understand our human language. And that is very, very much necessary for the generative AI or large language models to understand human context and also generate that on the basis of its relevant and context. As you see in this uh, screenshot, I just have a like a language translation model here that translates the uh, English language into the French language. Okay, now, now the next thing is text generation. So what do you mean by the text generation? The, the application that we see in the uh, today's era like chat gpt bard and more kind of uh, large language models they are doing the text generation okay so nlp techniques play a very pivotal role in training those models to generate text that mimics the human language pattern styles and semantics as well so you can see this like how chat gpt and bard are generating the text for our prompts as well okay Okay, the next thing is training data processing. Okay, so what do you mean by training data processing? So in order to train effective generative AI or large language models, large amount of textual data is required. And with the help of NLP, you can pre-process that textual data, clean that textual data as well, and also make it suitable for the large language models. So in our next video, I am going to teach you all the pre-processing techniques that are used in the NLP as well. So just be with it and wait for the day 6. Okay guys, okay. So the next thing that we uh, need to learn is language model fine tuning. Okay, so what do you mean by language model fine tuning? So language model fine tuning is you take a large language model like a GPT-3 or GPT-4 that requires the fine tuning for a specific task for a specific domain. Okay. As we know, the NLP techniques such as transfer learning, which involves training a model on a general task, then fine-tuning it for the specific task. Okay, specific task can be anything. You can train the 
GP3 model only for the healthcare domain, only for the uh, finance domain, only for the insurance domain only. And then you can give him some use cases that it only works for that use cases better. Okay, so that's the mean of uh, fine tuning. And if you just see here that uh, in my this video, I also train a kind of a model with the help of uh, two techniques. The first is called uh, multitask learning and the next is called uh, distillation as well that trains my live language model on a specific task which I already provided in the above uh, list. Okay, so it is just a very small example here that can show you that how you can fine tune your large language models. Okay, so the next thing is uh, contextual understanding. So what do you mean by contextual understanding? Contextual understanding means that it's a deep understanding of context in the language and NLP tasks such as named entity recognition and part, part of speech uh, that contributes to, to the model that it has the ability to understand the context, meaning and also the uh, sense of in which the language is spoken. Okay, so that is called the contextual understanding. Uh, the next thing is semantic coherence. So generative AI always aims to produce text that is not only grammatically correct, but also semantically correct as well. Okay, the, the sentences should also use the nouns, pronouns, adjectives and also the pronunciations at a very correct level. NLP techniques helps in capturing the semantics of those languages, ensuring that the generated text makes sense within that context as well. If you see this uh, screenshot here, it takes all the like reference corpus and then the topic. Now the base of a topic, it generates a semantic score. Okay, like semantic score or kind of the coherence score as well. So that on that base, it knows that which part of the sentence is important at what level. Okay, so in, in that way, it makes the semantic of the language intact. Okay, the next uh, uh, thing is summarization and uh, abstraction. So what do you mean by summarization? So summarization is basically means the NLP techniques that provide the text summarization or abstraction con contribute to generate of concise and very informative content. So that is valuable when you have a large corpus of data and you want summarization of that whole data. With the help of text summarization techniques, NLP can provide you a very concise summarization of that large corpus. Oh guys, okay, so now you know that why we use NLP in generative AI. Okay, so the next uh, thing is what are like different types of NLP algorithms that we are used in uh, generative AI. The first type of NLP algorithms are rule-based approaches. So the rule-based algorithms are like uh, regular expressions, finite state machines, context-free grammars. Okay, so these kind of algorithms only are uh, like done the part of NLP on the base of some rules which are already predefined. There is no like pattern recognition or some kind of uh, deep learning models or uh, mathematical applied. So this is only a rule-based approaches. So what are the like uh, pros and cons of that? So the pros are they are completely transparent because we already know the rules. Okay. And cons are it is limited adaptability to nuanced language because the rules which we uh, already set, we need to change it for every new language and every new language change as well. It also struggles with the ambiguity and also we have to maintain the whole rules that also a kind of a challenge and when to use the rule based approaches. So when we have clear cut instructions and clear cut patterns, we already know and only then you can use the rule based approaches. And when you know that your these specific rules are going to be used only in a specific domain. Okay, only then you can use this rule based approaches and when not to use when you are struggling with handling ambiguous language concept because in English in uh, many other languages as well there are like many words whose sound or have the same kind of uh, uh, context but their meaning is different so in that way you can't use rule based approaches and then is dynamic language so it less effective in dynamically changing environment where rules evolves rapidly so now the next kind of a type is statistical models okay statistical mod models are like anagram models or hidden marker models so the anagram models are those models which predicting the probability of a word based on the previous n minus one words 
ओके सो इट कैन बी यूनिग्राम बाईग्राम ट्राईग्राम एज वेल सो दैट एक्चुअली एज योर मॉडल नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट ऑन द बेस ऑफ प्रीवियस एन माइनस वन वर्ड वट इज द नेक्स्ट वर्ड दैट इज गोइंग टू बी जनरेटेड सो इन दैट वे द एनग्राम मॉडल वर्क्स एंड वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट दीज एग्रोथम्स इन अवर फर्दर वीडियोज एज सर ओके नाउ द हिडन मार्क ऑफ मॉडल आर लाइक द सिक्वेंस बेस्ड मॉडल दैट मॉडलिंग सिक्वेंस ऑफ ऑब्जर्वेशन विद हिडन स्टेट्स एंड दोज हिडन स्टेट्स आर लाइक द डेटा ऑफ द प्रीवियस वर्ड्स और प्रीवियस सेंटेंसेस एज वेल ओके ओके नाउ वट आर लाइक प्रोज एंड कॉन्स ऑफ दीज स्टिस्टिकल मॉडल्स दे हैंडल अनसर्टेनिटी वेरी वेल एंड इफेक्टिव फॉर अ सर्टेन सिक्वेंस मॉडलिंग टास्क एंड बट दे आर लिमिटेड टू कंटेक्चुअल अंडरस्टैंडिंग ओके सो एज आई नो दैट कंटेक्चुअल अंडरस्टैंडिंग इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इन एन एल पी टास्क बट दैट इज द कॉन्स ऑफ स्टिस्टिकल मॉडल्स इट स्ट्रगल्स विद द लॉन्ग टर्म डिपेंडेंसीज रिक्वायर एक्सटेंसिव डेटा ट्रेनिंग ओके सो वेन टू यूज सो वी कैन यूज इट वेन इट इज यूजफुल टू कैप्चर द प्रॉबलिस्टिक नेचर ऑफ ए लैंग्वेज वेन वी नो दैट विद द हेल्प ऑफ प्रीवियस वर्ड वी कैन प्रिडिक्ट द प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ अकरिंग एक्स वर्ड बट इट ऑल्सो स्ट्रगल विद द लॉन्ग रेज डिपेंडेंसी सो दैट शुड बी कीप इन माइंड ओके देन वी हैव अ सिक्वेंस मॉडलिंग टास्क एज वेल देन यू कैन यूज दिस स्टेस्टिकल मॉडल्स बट वेन नॉट टू यूज वेन वी नीड लॉन्ग टर्म डिपेंडेंसीज सो इन अ कंटेक्सट और इन ए टेक्सट ऑफ वेरी लार्ज कॉर्पस डेटा इट इज वेरी हार्ड टू मेनटेन द लॉन्ग रेंज डिपेंडेंसीज ओके एंड वेन वी नीड द सेमेंटिक अंडरस्टैंडिंग एज वेल दैट एवरी वर्ड एवरी नाउन पर नाउन एंड every kind of uh, part of speech should be at correct space and then we should not use the statistical models because they don't maintain the sem- semantic understanding as well okay okay so now the next uh, type of is machine learning models so machine learning models like uh, neb based models word vector machines and clustering algorithms as well so these models are basically used in the part of machine learning approaches by the nlp and if you want to know more about these algorithms you can click on the i button i already attached a video and put the link in the description as well okay now what are the pros and cons of these machine learning algorithms so the pros are it is effective for the supervised learning task can handle the complex decisions as well but it always relies on the labeled data only and may not generalize well on the unseen data without sufficient diversity because if you don't have a diverse kind of a data set then it always make a bias model as well okay and when to use so we can use it when we have a complete label data available and when you want to do the task like a sentiment analysis part of speech tagging and clustering as well then you can use these machine learning models but when not to use when you struggle with the label data if you don't have a label data then you don't use machine learning models and when you are data has a very very high non linearity in the data okay then you don't use the machine learning models because then you should shift to the deep learning models and now let's talk about the deep learning models so deep learning models uh, those algorithms are like recurrent neural networks and transformers we already discussed on recurrent neural networks in our previous videos and uh, for the transformers we will discuss in our future videos for sure okay so now let's discuss about the pros and cons of deep learning models so deep learning models the pros are they can exceptionally perform well on the complex task automatic feature engineering and also many more complex things as well but they are resource intensive you need like highly capable computer systems and also required a very large amount of data as well and they lack the interpretability as well so when to use we can use it when when we have to do the complex nlp task like machine translation text summarization next word prediction these kind of task we can use the deep learning models and it can perform really really well on the large amount of data and so when not to use when we have a very limited amount of data because on a very small kind of a data these algorithms not generalized very well if you have small amount of data you can use the statistical models or machine learning models okay and it has lack the interpretability okay so if you need to be interpretable model that can uh, explain its predictions then you can use the statistical models or machine learning models but if you don't need that you can use the deep learning models as well okay guys okay 
So in our next video, we'll talk about the NLP data preprocessing techniques with Python code implementations. So just be with it and we'll meet, meet in our day six video. And uh, if you want to know more about prompt engineering and uh, machine learning or financial data analysis, uh, you can watch my YouTube videos and also read my blogs or media myself. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. We'll meet in our next video. Thank you guys.